Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and the Washington football team just dropped their depth chart for this week one matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. So we're going to be going over that, talking about some potential surprises and much, much more. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Also hit that like button and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Also go ahead and follow my Twitter. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so there weren't any, you know, big, big surprises, but let's go ahead and get started with the offense. So obviously our starting outside receiver is Terry McLaurin with Deami Brown. Right behind him, our offensive line, starting offensive line, Charles Leno at left tackle, not a surprise at all. Eric Flowers at left guard, you know, not much of a surprise, but there was still some debate whether it would be him or Wes Schweitzer, but he ended up winning the job. Chase Roulier at center, Brandon Sheriff at right guard, uh, Sam Cosme at right tackle, and then you have Lucas backing up Leno, Schweitzer uh, backing up Flowers, and then Larson you know, backing up Ruli and then Sadiq Charles, you know, backing up Brandon Sheriff and Sam Cosme. We all know Ron Rivera loves that, you know, position versatility. And Sadiq Charles definitely brings that because he can play in college. He played left tackle his first year in the NFL only for two snaps, but he played left guard, and now they have him as a backup right guard and right tackle. So he has that versatility that Ron Rivera loves. Tight end, pretty interesting. Logan Thomas first, John Bay second, and they have Samus Reyes over Ricky Seals-Jones. So not too surprising, you know, because Ron Rivera did say that he thinks that Samus Reyes is their most physical blocker. And a lot of people within the building, according to John Kahn, think that he is their best blocker. So if that is the case, then Samus Reyes is going to get a lot of playing time at um, slot receiver, Adam Humphreys as a starter, and then DeAndre Carter and Dax Milne. Uh, I mean, I'm a little surprised with that, that, you know, DeAndre Carter's over Dax Milne because DeAndre Carter didn't show us anything in the preseason. Maybe they just weren't using him much. And maybe, you know, you know, we know the offense was, you know, vanilla in the preseason. So maybe with the actual offense, they'll use DeAndre Carter a little bit more. So I'm not sure if I'm totally buying that. Uh, with having DeAndre Carter over Dax Milne, we will see. Because, again, you have to take these. These are more reliable than the preseason depth chart where we had, like, Jarrett Patterson as the fifth running back. But we still, like, these are more reliable. But still got to take some of these things with a grain of salt. And then Curtis Samuel on the outside with Cam Sims as the backup. But we all know Curtis Samuel is going to go all over the place. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, the starter. Taylor Heineke, the backup. And Kyle Allen as the third string right there. Um, nothing there that's surprising at all. And then Gibson as a starter, McKissick as a backup running back, you know, AKA third down running back, and then Jarrett Patterson as the third back. So, you know, nothing too surprising there. We know Gibson's going to be our, you know, number one back. He's going to be, you know, usually our first and second down back and occasionally also our third down back. But, you know, if JD, JD McKissick's going to be our third down back, you know, primarily. Jarrett Patterson might get some reps there. Jarrett Patterson might come in for at some first and second down plays where we need a big play. And, you know, also we're going to use him on special teams, on punt team, not as a punt returner, but on punt team because he is valuable there. But uh, I not, nothing too surprising on the offensive side of the ball. I still don't, like I said, I don't necessarily buy them having DeAndre Carter over Dax Milne. But besides that, everything looks fine, and I think that's how it's going to be on game day. So on defense, starting defensive line, Chase Young at DN, Deron Payne, and Jonathan Allen at, you know, D-tackle, Montez Sweat at DN, and then James Smith-Williams and Casey Tuwill as the backup. So it looks like Casey Tuwill will be ready to go. We'll see. If not, then, you know, Shaka Tony will go in there. But it looks like Shaka Tony will be inactive on game days unless one of these, you know, James Smith-Williams or Casey Tuwill, you know, aren't playing. And then Tim Settle and Matt Ioannidis as the backups. But we all know Ioannidis is going to get a lot of snaps and even Settle as well. And that's going to keep Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen fresh, which I love. And like I said, Montez Sweat on the other side. Nothing there is a surprise at all. Linebackers, I would say 
nothing made like a like I said, no major surprises. But I would say, you know, Cole Holcomb at Sam, Jamin Davis at middle linebacker, and John Bosick at, you know, will linebacker. But having Khalid Hudson as the backup middle linebacker surprises me a little bit just because I didn't see him play that much in preseason. Again, Take these things with a grain of salt, but that I thought was interesting. And then David Mayo is a backup linebacker. If Cole Holcomb or Bossa goes down, Washington needs to bring another back, uh, another linebacker in because we don't want David Mayo to be our backup if any of our starters goes down and he's a backup for Holcomb and Bossa. Bring in the third round, third round rookie that the Raiders released, Tanner Muse. I think that's how you pronounce it. He's a really good special teams player, and he's got some potential. I would bring him in, um, and he could be, you know, high upside player that already can contribute on special teams. So the secondary, uh, nothing too surprising. And also, you know, Jamin Davis, I'm middle linebacker. He's been, you know, been getting all of the reps there. Let's see if he's ready. You know, I think the first few weeks he's definitely going to play a decent amount, but he might not play on some packages like nickel packages where he wasn't playing in the preseason. But eventually, as he gets more and more comfortable, then I think he will start to get, you know, play almost all of these snaps and then you know cornerback let's go right here so i think you know they got kendall fuller and william jackson as the two starters with benjamin st juice and tory mctire as a backup so you know nothing you know not a major surprise there tory mctire had a great great camp and great preseason and you know i think he's going to be a good good player for us dale roberts and troy apke as the two Third stringers, we don't want to see. We don't want to see them play. We do not want to see Daryl Roberts or Troy Apke touch the field at all. Um, Daryl Roberts, a little. I trust him a little bit more than Troy Apke. I definitely don't want to see Troy Apke play. Daryl Roberts is, you know, very versatile, so I'm fine seeing him. But really, we want to be seeing Kendall Fuller, William Jackson, Benjamin St. Juice, and Tory McTire. I think the starting, you know, if they do have three cornerbacks on the field, I think William Jackson the third. And Benjamin St. Juice will be on the outside with Kendall Fuller in the slot. And then Tro uh, Toy McTire can be the backup for the outside or the inside. And then at safety, no major surprises. Cameron Curl and Landon Collins as the starters. Landon Collins at strong safety. Cameron Curl at free safety with Bobby McCain as the backup for Cameron Curl. And DeShazer Everett as the backup for Landon Collins. But I do think, you know... They're going to have a lot of three safety sets. So Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, and Bobby McCain will be on the field together a lot. I think, you know, sometimes Landon Collins will be at Buffalo Nickel and they'll have Cameron Curl at strong safety and Bobby McCain at free safety. Sometimes they'll have, you know, um, Cameron Curl at Buffalo Nickel and keep Landon Collins at strong safety and Bobby McCain at free safety. They're going to rotate these guys a lot. I'm going to be interested to see how Cameron Curl looks at free safety if those uh, skills are able to translate over. So special teams, let's see these kick returners and punt returners. So, you know, these guys, nothing, you know, obviously we all know these guys, Tressway, Dustin Hopkins, Tressway again as the holder, and Cameron Cheeseman. Kick returner, though, DeAndre Carter is listed as a starter with Jarrett Patterson as the backup. And DeAndre Carter is listed as a starter for punt return and Dax Milne as the backup. So it looks like Dax Milne will be inactive on game days, at least based off this list. Because if DeAndre Carter is your kick returner and punt returner and he's listed ahead of Dax Milne, on the receiver death chart, you can't keep seven receivers active on game days. It's going to be really hard. So they're going to have to have probably him inactive. And my guess is for the players that are inactive, I would say, that, like I said, Dax Milne and then on uh, Shaka Tony, probably. So those are two right there. And then maybe on offense, they, uh, Dax Milne, like I said, and possibly an offensive lineman, and maybe Ricky Seals Jones or Samus Reyes, one of those guys. But yeah, they're going to have to, you know, keep some of these guys on the inactive list. So let me know what you guys think about these, uh, about this depth chart. What surprises you the most? Is there anything that you don't agree with? And are there any things that are concerning to you? 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those post notifications so you never miss a video. Peace, guys.